So with my recent computer problems and the fact that I've now had to nuke and pave and reinstall everything, I've decided to hop window managers. And I've been on i3 window manager basically for the last two years. It's been quite a long trek when it comes to me actually using you know i3 window manager. It's been fantastic. Now that doesn't mean I haven't used other ones. I've spent a month in Sway. I've spent a month in Qtile. I've used DWM some during some portions of the last two and a half years or so, you know, but I always use i3, go away from it, come back. i3 is my home. It's the configuration files that I've spent the most time, you know, ricing and configuring and all that stuff. So i3 is kind of where it's at for me, but it's time for something new. It doesn't mean I don't like i3 anymore. I still love it and I'll still probably go back to it. But I need something new. So I put out a poll on Mastodon. If you want to follow me on Mastodon, links in the video description. Hashtag YouTuber. And that poll basically asked where I should go next. And I gave a few options. And the option that won was Awesome Window Manager. Now, I've used Awesome before, but not long term. Basically, all I've ever used it for is ricing. And I've only ever done this on live streams for, you know, maybe like an hour and a half. And then I immediately skedaddled back into whatever window manager I was using full time. I've never actually installed Awesome on hardware and intended to use it for any amount of time. It's just not something that I've ever really considered doing simply because... How should I put this lightly? I don't like Lua. I, I'm not a big fan of Lua. There's a reason why my NeoVim configuration file is still 100% Vim script. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I've not transitioned that thing to Lua at all, and I don't know that I ever intend to do so. Lua and I just do not get along. Now, when it comes to programming languages that I dislike, Lua is in the firm number two spot behind Haskell. So... It does have that going for it. It's not the worst language for me ever. Now, every time I say I hate Haskell, so there's someone out there. Well, Matt, Haskell's fantastic. I'm sure it is. It just, I'm too stupid for it. I'm just, I'm, I'll just be completely blunt about it. I'm not smart enough to do Haskell. It, there's too many weird symbols there that I don't understand. Uh, it, it, it's like trying to code in Klingon, but that's beside the point. Lua is still kind of like that, but it reminds me a little bit of Python, so I can at least kind of understand, you know, it has commas and stuff where in, in certain places, and, you know, it it's, doesn't have the weird symbols the Haskell's got going on for it, so I can understand it at least, and I can learn it at least, you know, learn enough to configure a window manager in at least. So I have switched to Awesome Window Manager, and this is where I am right now, and I know it doesn't look like much. I'm still getting there. And I have some just very early, very initial thoughts on awesome. And the first one is that I don't care for the bar. I I'm that thing's going to take a lot of work in order to get that thing to look anywhere decent. The default bar, that thing is fugly. It's not a good looking bar. It has some cool functions and cool features, but I don't really care for that particular default layout. So I'm going to have to change that. The second thing my second initial thought and after doing some research and having Josh do some research for me, it, it is my disappointment that scratch pads aren't something that's built in. So I'm not going to be able to just use a you know a standard key binding for scratch pad. I'm gonna have to go download something called Bling or something like that. So it looks like this, and apparently that has scratch pad functionalities. I haven't gotten too much into it, but apparently it works fine, and I will try that. But I was disappointed that I that scratch pads wasn't a default feature. That was that's number two. The third thing that I noticed is that the configuration file is really freaking long. Now, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that I like very short configuration files. My i3 configuration file is approximately 20 lines long. Now, obviously, if you added up all the files that I source and stuff like that inside of the i3 configuration file, it's longer. But I like a very organized configuration file. So by default, the fact that this one here is almost 600 lines long, it, it messed with my brain just a little bit. And obviously, approximately half of these are comments, so those could go away. And I'm assuming that if I wanted to, there's a way to source and include stuff 
from this file that I could do. I just don't know that yet. I'll have to figure that out. But just out of the box, that's something that I noticed and something that I know eventually is going to be something that I'm going to have to deal with because my brain just works in really freaking stupid ways. So that's, that's the third thing. The fourth one is that... The tags remind me a lot of DWM, which makes sense because this is basically, I believe this is a fork of DWM that was really written in Lua. Maybe it's the other way around. I don't really know. I know it has something, to, it has some relationship with DWM. So the tags being uh, similar to DWM makes sense. And similar to DWM, these are going to drive me nuts because at least from my initial look and feel, I don't think that there's a way for me to control the tags on both monitors with separate key bindings. So b basically in i3, I have super one through zero will change the workspaces on my first monitor. And I have alt one through zero to control the, the workspaces on my second monitor. So that's the way I like to work. And I would love to find out if that's a possibility and awesome. So far, I haven't really found that. Now I haven't done too much looking into it. So maybe it's possible it exists. I just haven't got there yet, but I'm really hoping that that is something that I can deal with. I would love to be able to use my keyboard to move between specific workspaces on both monitors. And as of right now, the it's really weird, the default key bindings for this. So if I wanted to move my focus from monitor one to monitor two, it's super control, uh, I believe J and K. I think it's J and K. Maybe it's H and L. It's one of those two. And it's a little weird. If it's J and K, it's even more weird because that's sh that's up and down. H and L should be side to side. I don't know. It's still, like I said, I'm just, I'm just obviously just learning, but still that's way more key bindings than I really want just to change focus. So I'm going to have to change that for sure. Uh, another thing is that if I wanted to move a window from one screen to another screen, it's super O and that just switches the client from one screen to another screen, but that screen has to be active. So if I wanted to move, say this window here that you're seeing over to the other monitor, it would move this client to the other monitor to whatever workspace, or in this case tag, is in focus on the other monitor. So I couldn't send, and just for example, right now I have tag six active on my secondary monitor. If I moved this client that you're seeing on screen to tag six on the other monitor, that's the only option I have. I couldn't move it from where it's at right now to tag five on the other monitor because tag five is not in focus. If that made any sense at all, it doesn't mean that that's not possible. It's just out of the box, it doesn't seem possible. So that's, again, something that I'm going to have to investigate. So the movement of Windows isn't, it doesn't feel as flexible as other window managers. It's probably not true. Like there's probably plenty of ways to do this and I just haven't got there yet. So don't get in the comments saying, Matt, you're an idiot. You can do all this stuff you're talking about. I'm sure you probably can. I'm just not there yet. So I've only spent a couple hours in this so far. So these are very, very early, early first impressions. And I'm not being fair, fair to awesome at all. And that's where I want to end this video. I want to talk about the perception that I have of awesome window manager and also my disinterest in it. So I put this on the poll. It's my own damn fault. And it won. And I promised myself that whichever window manager won that poll, I would choose and use, and I'm regretting my life choices. So I went into this experiment with a very, very bad attitude. Like it was really bad and it hasn't improved. The things that I'm talking about and the things that I've talked about in this video, I'm sure are possible with some research and stuff like that. And I'm going to do that research and try to make awesome work for me. But because I had that initial disinterest in it and I've had bad experiences with Lua in the past, I just, everything's rose colored. I've been way, usually when I started a new window manager project, I'm gung ho. Like I really, I'm really looking forward to getting to working to the point where, you know, it works really well for me in terms of key bindings and customization and rising all this stuff. I'm really, really excited about it. When I jumped into to Qtile, I was like, yes, a new window manager. It's going to be awesome. When it comes to awesome, I didn't have that. I, I, I didn't feel that way. I didn't feel gung-ho about it. I felt like it was a chore. And it's not a chore. It's just that's my attitude towards it. And it's not really good. So I need to, most of the stuff that I've talked about in this thing and the negative kind of tone that I've had in this whole video is a mental block that I have 
regarding Awesome Window Manager. I don't know what it is, and hopefully I can discover that and kind of seriously move past it, because I'm sure Awesome is a fantastic window manager. I'm sure that all the things that I say are prob are missing are probably there and fairly easy to do. I just need to, you know, do it and stop complaining about it, because obviously I have some kind of vendetta against Awesome Window Manager, and I don't even understand it. It's one of those mental things that you just, you have a... Uh, I have some kind of feeling about Awesome Window Manager or the perception of Awesome Window Manager is skewed or something in my brain that I can't really understand, and that's coloring everything else. So, it's going to be an interesting month, because I'm going to stick with this damn thing for... <laughs> See, there I went again. I like even called it a damn thing. I'm going to stick with it for a month at least, and I'm going to use it. And I'm going to try to, you know, I'm going to customize it. I'm going to make sure that all the key bindings are where I need it to be. I'm going to rice the damn thing to, to here and gone. You know, I'm going, to, I'm going to make this thing mine as much as possible. And hopefully by the end of the month, I will come out saying, well, you know what? Awesome's really great, you know? And I, and I should have given it a better, more fair chance earlier in my Linux career. And I'm sad that I didn't. Hopefully that's where I can come out on this. And that's probably where I will come out because everyone that I've talked to, like everyone has said that awesome is really good. Maybe it wasn't for them, but very few people have said, you know, Matt, awesome is terrible. It's a very bad window manager. You shouldn't try it. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that. So obviously my problem with this thing is completely mental um, in more ways than one. So that is it for this video. I'm switching to awesome window manager and uh, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should be happy about it. I just, uh, for whatever reason, I'm not. So, yeah, I do it for you guys. If you uh, have thoughts, comments on Awesome Window Manager, things that you'd like me to try out while I'm here, uh, any of that kind of stuff, leave those comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you very so very much if any of you would like to support me on libera pay that link will be in the video description as well thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time